Hey everyone, this is John and Stacy from the Paranormal Sideshow Podcast, and there is something strange about this week, May sixteenth. Each week, we'll be posting videos of strange news and odd occurrences from around the world as discussed on our Paranormal Sideshow podcast, as well as featuring a bonus story just for our YouTube viewers. So, Stacy, where in the weird world should we start this week? Well, John, this is a strange one for you. 33 scientists have published a report called Cause of Cambrian Explosion, Terrestrial or Cosmic, which claims that the octopus came to Earth from space as frozen eggs millions of years ago. Wait a second. So you're talking about octopus yes. are aliens? Yes. That's what this report claims. Like octa-aliens. <laughs> Something like that. Yes. They're claiming that because this certain period of time, the Cambrian explosion, everything happened all at once and the octopus came, there's no evolutionary chain to show all the different things the octopus can do, like the crazy color changing and the how smart they are and all the amazing things that, you know, an octopus is scary and can do. And like grow so, to super, you know, super size and, and <laughs> pull down boats underneath the ocean and something like that. Yeah. So they claim that the frozen eggs millions of years it's ago flew to earth and but landed here. <laughs> and that explains how this octopus is here now and why they're just here all of a sudden millions of years ago. Wow. So technically, octopus are aliens, yeah. according to this. I mean, octopus are strange anyway, right? They are. I mean, they're really crazy. Have mm -hmm. you ever seen like the video where the one octopus is on a on a ship? Mm -hmm. It's a, like a fishing vessel. Right. And it's trying to squeeze its way out through the, the little hole. Oh, and they're so it, creepy. It's, it's nuts. They're it, creepy and amazing. They, they are. They are. So, I mean, we always knew there was something up with them. Yes. Yes. It, well, they, they can visually learn, too. They can watch somebody do something and then learn to do it. Yeah. So they're That's like, not right. They're like a sleeper cell. <laughs> of, of, of aliens and well you know they we did have that story recently where people said what would aliens look like and the experts all say yeah they would look like octopus absolutely that was an actual story that yes. we did on our podcast yes that was about the, the the freaking octopus is what they would look like and we all laughed about that yes and that's the what they put in the movies yeah and absolutely. you know hollywood knows yeah that's this definitely strange yes for our next story i have one just about as crazy as the octopus okay this one's about the seismograph readings. Yes, that was very strange. Absolutely. On May 12th, which was last Friday, mm -hmm. about 2.48 a.m., it started in Maine, mm -hmm. right here with us. Exactly. And it went all the way down to like North Carolina and all the way across the country. Mm -hmm. Like 3,000 miles we're talking here. Mm -hmm. And it was the seismographs were going off. And the weird thing about this was, let me just put it out like this like if we started in one city and there was a small little quake right okay there would be a reading on that now the next quake over um away from the epicenter mm -hmm. it would get a little bit smaller on the right. reading and and right. then you know and so on and so forth right it would keep getting smaller until it dissipated and was completely gone right right it would not stay the same strength exactly. now the problem was the one that happened in maine at 248 was the same strength that happened over in California and that area on dozens of seismographs. It went across the country mm -hmm. around the same, almost the exact same intensity. Mm -hmm. And it was like you could track it. Yeah, you could see on all the seismograph readings, it shows you what time and right. you could watch the time right. when it hit where. And, exactly. And it only took it like 20 minutes about, or so. About 20 minutes. It, it went from Maine to Oregon. Yes. And, you know, that's the crazy part. And 3,000 miles in mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it was, you would think, something underground. Right. So there's something that's going underneath the ground. And now mm -hmm. the first thing I think of on this mm -hmm. is the mysterious booms. Right, right. Um, on our Paranormal Sideshow podcast, we've mm -hmm. talked about mysterious booms yes. over and over and over for Many eight times. years. Yes. We have talked about on our on all of our podcasts, mm -hmm. we have talked about the mysterious booms. And we'll be doing videos on our YouTube about mysterious booms coming up mm -hmm. just because it's such a passion for us. Right. But this one, I believe, is a very crazy story. There's not a whole lot more about this out well, there. It's not. It was such a small rumble that it's not something any local area would have even picked up or yeah. talked about. And unless you looked at all the readings like this guy did right. and put it together, you wouldn't know that it went all yeah, the way across the country. Absolutely. So it's I just crazy. think it's, it's something strange. And it's one of those things, as with everything, you decide for yourself, but keep your eyes open at all times. All right, John. Well, here's another weird story for you from All this right. week. And this is about the 14th human foot that has been found oh in British God. Columbia. Oh, my God. Another one in a shoe 
found by a man walking on the beach and it was stuck in a log jam. And of course he called the authorities and they came and they are investigating. Right. We don't know anything about this one yet. I know it's, it's so crazy. And you know, in British Columbia here recently, they've been having uh, some legendary flooding mm -hmm. um, like they've never seen before from a big snowpack they had this year. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if that has anything also to do with this or I don't know. It's so strange because it's all in the same general area, right? 14 feet. Always. They and have this has been going on. on for a while. Yeah. Years. We've been doing stories on this for years right. and they have no idea why it's just a foot, a I mean, dismembered foot. That's it's it. It's so insane. It's I crazy. mean, I mean, is it aliens? Is it is it some kind of government testing? Is <laughs> it a picky Sasquatch? I don't know. I feel like if there's people that are in the ocean, maybe the, maybe fish are eating them, but they don't like shoes, right? So they eat everything except the shoes. I, I don't know, man. Yeah, that's it. Why wouldn't that happen in you know California Everywhere. beaches and New York beaches and exactly? It's just happening here in, in British Columbia. Yes. It's, and 14 now. Yeah, very, very odd. And I know that you want to look more into this and mm -hmm. you've been wanting to investigate this. We've talked about this on the Paranormal Sideshow podcast. Yes, ever a couple since, of times. Yeah, ever since yeah. the story has started. Mm -hmm. So very interesting stuff. All right, just to one-up the creepiness on everybody. Okay. Researchers are keeping pig brains alive outside of the body. Oh, such a strange story. Yeah, from, from the Saturday afternoon sci-fi edition. <laughs> My God, how many movies started this way? Is this Dr. Frankenstein? Uh, it's Frankenstein. <laughs> In a step that could change the definition of death. Researchers have restored circulation to the brains of decapitated pigs oh my goodness. and kept the reanimated organs alive for as long as 36 hours. It's crazy. So basically at this event back in March, mm -hmm. these neuroscientists from Yale University disclosed, I like the fact they use the word disclosed. Right. How, it's like, how do you break the news on this one, right? <laughs> that they had uh, experimented. Right. On between 100 and 200 pig brains. Right. Obtained from a slaughterhouse. It reminds me of when a cop pulls you over mm -hmm. and you say, I've had three or four beers. <laughs> right. You know, right. I wonder how many pig brains they've really they've experimented really, yeah, on. Exactly. Excuse me, sir. I believe you've had a few more than 200 pig brains. <laughs> but, you know, the weird thing is they're restoring the circulation using a system of pumps, heaters uh -huh. and bags of artificial blood warmed to body temperature. It's crazy. There was no evidence that the disembodied pig brains were gaining consciousness. However, in what the doctors termed mind-boggling and unexpected result, mm -hmm. billions of individual cells in the brains were found to be healthy and capable of normal activity. So basically, they have a brain in a bucket. Yeah. And they and are that's what they call it. it. They're keeping it alive. Right. Brain in a bucket. And they actually don't have any idea... If it's really cognitive or not. Exactly. They're saying that they have no signs that has restored consciousness. Right. But the whole thing, it's really opened up a big debate mm -hmm. about, you know, the whole story about, you know, is it okay? What kind of pain would it be going through if this was human trials? Right. You know, even with the pigs, what are they really experiencing? Yeah. So it's, it's opened up all kinds of debate. And, you know, we went in depth with this on the Paranormal Podcast. Mm -hmm. If you want to listen to more about the story, we just think it's a strange story that really needs to be it's crazy. talked about a little bit more. Yes, and discussed. <laughs> and discussed a little bit more. I'm not saying it's the worst thing in the world if they could figure this out, but it does sound like a weird brew for it, it an end-of-the-world apocalypse. It could be used in, in nefarious ways. It could be. Yes. Okay, so let's do this brand new story. Ah, would this be the bonus content? The bonus story. Just that for only our YouTube viewers <laughs> will hear until next week's podcast? Yes, they get a preview. It's a preview. <laughs> so this story is about how scientists have done a memory transplant in snails. Ah. It's crazy. So I'm going to explain to you how this worked, okay? So this is research that was published. I bet it took them a long time to do it, right? <laughs> Snail space. This research was published in the journal called eNeuro. And so the scientists had this group of snails. And they took some of the snails and they started applying a shock to the tail of the snails. Right. They were quick to say that this did not hurt the snails. Of course they did. But it did teach them to have a defensive mechanism where... Later on, when they would just tap their tails, right. the snails would draw their tails up. That's horrible, It's really. a defensive mechanism. Yeah, it's like goosing them. <laughs> so they would tap the tails of the snails that they shocked. The snails would have the defensive mechanism. If they tapped the tails of snails they did not shock, 
they didn't do anything. Right. Okay. So then they extracted some RNA from the snails that were shocked. And this mm -hmm. is, it's a ribonucleic acid. It's like a molecule that controls their function. Absolutely. And they injected it into the snails that had not been shocked. Okay. Okay. Essentially transferring that. Right. So then when they tapped the tails of the snails that had not been shocked. Oh my God. Those snails had the defensive mechanism. Oh my God. I've seen where that was going. Yes. So essentially. They transferred memory. They transferred the memory from this group of snails to this other group of snails. And they claim that this is something that even though the snail is not as complex as a human, that this is something that could possibly be well, yeah. du duplicated. Uh, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> well, it, it has helped them understand how memories are stored. And a couple questions came up. Like people were wondering, you know, is does this apply to memories that have been laid down through, you know, life experience? Because this memory that they transferred is more of a defensive. It's kind you of know, a muscle memory. Muscle memory kind of thing. So they were curious if this would also work. For like uh, a broken heart. Right. Or for You know, like if you see your ex-wife, you're going to go cringe. <laughs> I think that might be muscle memory too. But, you know, I think the hopes in the future down the road eventually is maybe helping Alzheimer's patients or, you know, PTSD, people like that. But they don't really know yet, you know, because they yeah. still don't know how that memory, the, even this experiment changes their thinking on how memories are stored I, in the brain. I like this one a lot better than the pig brain experiment. Yes, me too. But it's amazing. I think that even they were amazed with, yeah. with the success of, of what they had done. Leaps and bounds. Yes, very crazy. Okay, for this last story, it's not going to be quite as scientific. Okay. This one's kind of going back to our kind of science. Okay. Karmas and curses. Oh, my favorite thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're going <laughs> to, you, you love this. A thief was forced to surrender to police after a sack of corn he stole mm -hmm. was stuck to his back. Oh, my goodness. The unlucky thief was forced to surrender himself to authorities in Tanzania after a sack of corn he had stole stuck on his back. <laughs> Frank Jaffet was subjected to hours of unprecedented torture. I love the fact of how they <laughs> used that together. Unprecedented torture. I think it was precedented. He stole it. <laughs> exactly, that right? Makes it precedented. Exactly. <laughs> After the 44 pound sack literally wouldn't get off his back. 44 pounds. That's um, heavy. He revealed the bag was stolen from an unfortunate woman on the evening of Wednesday, May 2nd, but it had been torture as the bag somehow stayed on his back ever since. The man was going to leave the bag at a friend's house and go back for another one. Mm -hmm. But the bag clung to his body mysteriously. That's karma. Before resorting to going to the police, Jaffet had been strolling around for literally hours in hopes that he, <laughs> that the bag would actually fall off. Right. To no avail. He finally had to go to the police and be like, look. You know, <laughs> I can't um, get this off. Exactly. That's crazy. Authorities called the woman to come get her stolen property. Now, because this was, you know, Kenya and right. Tanzania, it's hard to get a lot more details than that. Right. So we don't know how the corn came off or, or if it came or off. if it came off, yeah. if he currently lives with the woman and, you know, she beats him daily, you know, <laughs> or this he is has what to you wait get. until she uses all the corn. Uh, yes, I mean, something, uh, something, right. They, <laughs> they know that old school magic and stuff. I guarantee it. Yes. Anytime we do a village story, whenever you listen to our paranormal Sacho podcast, we always do village stories and they still have the strong belief in a lot of these places. Mm -hmm. And honestly, because of that belief, it seems like it actually works, right? I, I think all the locals really think that she cursed it when he stole it. Uh, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Cool story, though. Hey, guys, if you like what you've heard, please check out ParanormalSideshow.com and follow the links for our weekly podcast. Also, become a Sideshow off yourself and pick one of our killer levels on our Patreon to help support the channel and help keep us bringing you bigger and better content. So until next week... For my lovely wife, Stacy, I'm John Edwards. So long and stay strange.